What do you get when you subtract a Super 10 from 1660? The 1650 Super has been there in the market for some time now. This card costs about 15,000 Indian rupees or about 200 US dollars right now. And this variant comes without any RGB on it. So let's see how it performs in both games and uh, some rendering software too. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So you know 3D is a well-known brand but doesn't get much attention as let's say an ASUS or a Gigabyte. But they are reliable nonetheless as most of their GPUs do come with 3 years of warranty at a very competitive price actually. For example, an almost similar spec card from ASUS will cost 2000 rupees more which is 26 US dollars more for the same 3 years of warranty. Just make sure Inno 3D has good customer service in your country. In the box you get a CD which you can't run because really where are the CD-ROMs uh, drives now? And a small card explaining the power requirements of this and many other cards from Inno 3D which is good. Going through the specs quickly, this is a 4GB variant with 2080 CUDA cores and yes it doesn't support RTX which is fine when even some of the 2000 series budget cards perform really poorly in games with RTX on. But there is a workaround for that if you look on YouTube. The card's length is about 220mm and the height is 113mm and can fit most of the cases easily. The heatsink has one long heat pipe which travels across the entire heatsink and they come out in opposite direction. A small thermal pad can be seen here sleeping comfortably on top of the chip. The actual fan size was near about 8.5cm. The car needs a 6-pin power connector which is not mounted on the top but is there towards the right behind the plastic shell which has a matte finish on it. And for display connectors, it has a DVI-D and a HDMI 2.0B and a DisplayPort 1.4 on it and can support up till 8K displays and if you own one of them, then boy, you are rich or what? Eno 3D has this software known as Eno 3D TuneIt to let you tune their cards and their lighting if the card supports it. It also has an easy mode if you don't want to fiddle in the advanced mode for that tiny boost in most of the cards out there. My setup runs on a Ryzen 3900X with 32GB of 3200MHz RAM and an ASUS X570 motherboard in a Cooler Master MB520 case. Coming on to the benchmarks quickly and starting with gaming, the card ran Counter-Strike GO at high settings comfortably at an average FPS of 143 with not so bad 1% and 0.1% low frame rate performance actually. So if you have a 144Hz monitor and play a lot of CSGO, boy you are in a treat with this card. Even at 4K resolution, it did give a good stable 78 FPS, but yeah those 1% and 0.1% lows definitely suffered. In Fortnite at 1080p in epic settings, it gave a good stable 81 average FPS, but in 4K it was remarkably unplayable. That's anyway a resolution 4 times of 1080p which uh, you might already know. In Shadow of Tomb Raider, at its highest settings, at 1080p, the game was quite fluid as it did reach the 60fps mark as an average FPS. But at 4K, it actually stuttered like most of our lives during these times. But look at us though, gaming and actually enjoying in lockdown. These are the unique superposition scores when compared to its elder brother and sort of a father or maybe grandfather or maybe grand grand... Uh... And let's see how those 1280 CUDA cores perform in some software tests like video rendering on Premiere Pro for H265 codec for a 4 minutes 4K clip. The 1650 Super took about 2 minutes 42 seconds for the clip to render. The 1660 Super in comparison was 12% faster than it. A key shot render on GPU mode took about 86 seconds and the 1660 Super was not even 10% faster than it. But damn how insanely fast the 2070 Super is, proving how the 1600 series cards are not meant for GPU rendering if you do that a lot. During most of my tests, the average temps stayed under 70 degrees Celsius, which was extremely impressive for the load I threw on the card, considering it only has one main heat pipe. The noise levels were fine too, but yeah, under some load, you could hear a very slight sound of the fans, but I didn't find them to be very noticeable to my loud hearing ears. So there you have it. A too much to the point uh, video on a graphic card which I enjoyed using whilst uh, crunching these numbers. The card ran extremely smoothly on games like Shadow of Tomb Raider and Fortnite uh, but at 1080p. My monitor doesn't support 1440p above 24Hz so couldn't test these games at that resolution. If only more of you subscribed and more companies took notice of me, I might get uh, some of those monitors too, you know.
I have also posted a review of this 1660 Super variant from Inno 3D but with the same benchmark numbers of course. I will obviously put the links in the description. Hit a like and sub with the bell if this video helped you in any way. Stay safe humans, Muvod out.